Hey everyone, it's Eric Dorr here, and today I have a special guest. Today we are talking with Asura Saik. And Asura spent more than four years making videos on the Jungian cognitive functions. Something that I've seen with Asura is that the, you, you do a really good job of applying the core teachings and ideas of Jung in your videos. You really seem to try to stay true to the core practices of uh, uh, how things work and how the cognitive functions are and what things are, uh, what's really happening. So I was wondering what ideas and theories have inspired your approach the most to making videos and to understanding personality types? So I kind of got started doing type videos. I, I've, I've probably told the story before somewhere, but um, you, you're probably familiar with Michael Pierce, right? He's been on YouTube doing type yeah. videos for almost a decade now, probably. Yeah. I got into type, like watching his videos and learning from him. And I was like, wow, these are really good, but they're really long. And they're like 30 to 40 minutes. And my original thought process was, what if I could take these like complex ideas and just turn them into like, smaller more digestible pieces of information and maybe right. you could see that as like any nite kind of you know condensing and giving that knowledge and to me that's what inspires me and why i enjoy making videos and why i tend to stay to the more shorter form topics because i feel like some people really like to have that that really deep understanding but for some people it's like well what how can i use this like what's the practical application here and that's what i strive for and what interests me about Jungian typology is that there is a ton of application there is just like if you know this about yourself, you can make changes in your life and your communication with others. Yeah, I feel uh, the same way. A lot of there's a lot of really intelligent uh, people making videos about typology and about the cognitive functions, but a lot of the time they can become very abstract and very broad. Uh, so uh, we definitely also need to sometimes sit down and look down and see, okay, how can we simplify this? How can we make this digestible? What can we? How can we apply it? I think application is an area where we miss uh, things a lot. Uh, so we, we talk about the cognitive functions in an abstract point of view, but we never place it into specific situations. I was wondering, what do you do to uh, make sure that uh, we can also just, we can also apply the cognitive function theories in our personal lives and relationships? Right. The, to me, the biggest step I find with helping people understand type and, and actually using type is to, for one, they have to get over the initial barrier of entry of cognitive functions which, you know, when, when you first get into MBTI, you just start with those letters and dichotomies and you get into cognitive functions. But I think some of the problem is, is because our systems are so diverse in the community that like everybody's trying to define things. Oops, sorry, smack my mic. Everybody's trying to do things in different ways. Um, so therefore it's, it's hard for people to apply knowledge when there's not a, like a single consensus of what that knowledge is. Um, so one of the things I try to do like on my channel to help people is say, this is just my understanding of Jung's work. Like I don't have my own system. I don't have these other things. This is just how I'm interpreting what he wrote in his books and what the ideas that have come from me uh, reading those books. Here's how you can use that information theoretically. Um, so it gives people a very streamlined, singular approach to how they can apply type. Yeah, I think that's very important because a lot of time I can feel like we have all these different systems, uh, models uh, operating, but a lot of time we are small isolated islands, we have our own little bubble where we work and uh, uh, so I think we're sometimes missing to reference our work and our ideas, where do they come from, where do we get this, uh, uh, and what is this, is this the truth, or is this an application or a theory or an interpretation of it. Right. And th that's a, one thing that you just said that was really important is like, how did I come to this conclusion? Yeah. Uh, Cause I think that's the thing that's missing with a lot of people with type. And if, if you read psychological types, like the first 75% of that book is young talking about like how he came to types. Mm -hmm. It's not about, like, he's not describing anxiety. He's not doing, it's just like, this is the, the things that led me to believe that there's probably types in people. And then he describes the type and you're like, oh, that makes sense. Like, he, he went through all this clinical, practical work, you know, worked with people, and that's what led him to these conclusions. And that's why he defined these things in that way. And now yeah. you've got all these people with systems, and they're just like, this works like this because I said so, because it's this. And you're yeah. just like, okay. like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, you can come up with a classification system for anything. You can choose to say uh, anything is anything. Yeah, but uh, uh, we need to start to connect our classifications and labels. So my question to you is... Uh, 
uh, how can we stop using them with, yeah, just to label people? How can we start uh, creating definitions and uh, terminology and things that can help people grow and improve on themselves and uh, do something more than just uh, pure, okay, what am I? How do I describe what I am? Right. I, I did a, a video on this pretty recently, kind of like a similar topic of the idea of identity with type. Um, and I think the problem is, is when people come into typology, they're looking for something to identify with instead of looking for something that can help them grow. And like one of my mottos I say is that like, even though I'm an INTJ, I don't say, I don't often say that I'm an INTJ. Like if you watch my videos, I very rarely refer to myself as an INTJ. And it's because to me, the identity of INTJ isn't what matters. I'm just a person who happens to be an INTJ. And what does that mean for me? Like, what does that mean for the, like my growing journey? Because the, the journey of type is more important than the actual type itself. Yeah. And that's something that Young talked about too. Sorry, um, <laughs> didn't want to cut you off there. Um, but Young talked about the idea that like, like the type doesn't matter. You know, people often uh, quote him talking about type as like a parlor trick. And he's like, just throw the type out the window and learn about the functions and what they mean and why it's important to know them. Oh, I can, I know that quote by heart. It's like, they mean nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> I cannot say that in a German accent, but uh, I, <laughs> I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a, everybody should watch that video because that's when you go like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> uh, so this is just a methodology. It's just a tool. It's not uh, meant to be the uh, like ultimate answer to how the human brain works. Exactly. It's, it's just a framework of understanding is how I like to say it. So I was wondering, what do you feel besides uh, this that most people get wrong about uh, Jungian psychology? So one thing that I've, that I learned like going deeper into Jung's work and reading some of his other books um, is I'm coming, I've come to the conclusion that I actually think that the first and third functions are more important in the psyche mm -hmm. um, or the third function particularly is more important than the auxiliary yeah. um, because I, I, in, in his book, psychology and alchemy or alchemy and psychology, I can never remember which word is first. Jung draws an illustration of the mind and the psyche in reference to types. Uh, and you can see that like the auxiliary function is like more in consciousness, yeah. not the auxiliary, sorry, the tertiary function is more in consciousness. And to me that was like, oh, so because you're an introverted type, your first and third functions are conscious. Right. And therefore your second and fourth are unconscious. And therefore you have to go into your unconscious to deal with your second to fourth function. And that's something that I feel like has been really helpful, especially in coaching is like getting people to understand that like your auxiliary function is going to be the thing that helps you grow. It's going to be, mm -hmm. it's not always going to be super natural and easy for you. And sometimes it might even be stressful, but it's the yeah. thing that is most important for you to work on. Yeah. Uh, for often how I've seen it, this, the third function is our tool or how we do things. And the second function is uh, for what goal or what aim that we do it. So that's often how it comes to be. Like the uh, third function becomes uh, uh, like actually more important in the sense because that we're constantly working on doing and uh, engaging and improving on that function in order to better reach our goal, which is often embodied by the second function. That, so that's right. often how I see it. And I know uh, currently personality theory, Harry uh, Merle, uh, he also has similar theory. He also calls the INTJ the uh, INFT type. And for him, that's just the, what he wants to do there is he wants to say that an INTJ is an NIFI type uh, who works towards TE. Right. And I can totally see like that approach. And uh, you know, even if we're talking about systems like objective personality, they have their jumpers. And I think that people, people notice this trend in some sense where it's like, oh, the first and third functions are important and like to the individual. And, and that's what they tend to want to work towards, at least what's interesting to them. But you see that, that especially in the introverts, it's far more noticeable than the extroverts because the introverts go from like this weird inner world to then having this completely different outer experience when they go into extroversion. Um, so you see like this inner value being chased and they kind of go through it through their auxiliary function sometimes yeah. in the outer yeah. world i mean yeah ultimately personally i don't uh, think we can uh, generalize and say that the third function is always stronger than the second function right. often what i'm starting to see is that uh, it varies based on your development so the current functions they're not necessarily about use at all uh you can have some people like uh, the young person in that case that 
uh, uh, have learned to use the first and the third function. And they're often very introverted, these types that uh, go to the first and third function if they're introverts. Uh, similarly, an extrovert that goes into the first and third, they're very, very extroverted. Uh, but uh, there is certainly uh, people that have developed differently to use the functions differently. And so instead of uh, typing based on uh, uh, which functions you use the most, the way I try to type people is, okay, which kind of functions uh, put you in a state of flow? Do you associate with a positive wording that makes you, when you feel good, what do you do that makes you feel good? That, that often tends to align a lot more with what our core preferences are. I think we agree there because I tend to I tend to type uh, in, a, in almost, almost like a values centric way. Like, what is yeah. important to you? What is interesting to you? Same. Um, is this is this easy for you? Type of thing. Um, and I definitely agree that functions are not uh, actions. That is something that the type community really needs to understand. Is that like I, I, I use the the over exaggerated example of like punching someone in the face is not se. No, like yeah. It, it, <laughs> there's a hundred different ways that you could come to the conclusion to point, punch someone in the face, and it's not always going to be SE when you do it. Yeah, the cognitive functions, they're a cognitive model of the psyche. It's not the behavioral model of the psyche. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, important to remember. Uh, I was wondering, uh, is, what is something that you've been trying to change about uh, how Jungian psychology is applied? I would like to see it talked about more in higher academia um, and it's like it's something that even when I like apply to PhD programs and something that I'm not afraid to talk about even if it might make me look worse like right. because in the world of professional academia people who have never read Young criticize typology and MBTI having no understanding of it but I right. feel like if you could just sit down and have a conversation with people and be like this is just a model of understanding we're not trying to say it's some like super exact clinical science we're right. saying it's a philosophy that could really help people um I think that's something that I would I want to personally work towards as I continue my professional development yeah. um, and see it more accepted in higher academia so what kind of reactions do you get when you talk about young in higher academia if you talk about young, it's not so bad. If you talk about MBTI, it's a different response. Because uh, like you can skirt around and they'll be like, oh, young, he's a psychologist. All right, cool. Uh, but you kind of have to, you have to lean in with that. You have to be like, oh, like we're going to talk about young. And then we can, he came to these conclusions and this led to personality type. And if you can get that far, most people are pretty understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, like back when I worked in my, uh, in a lab with other college students, mm -hmm that's how I would talk about it. And they'd be like, oh, that makes sense. Like, you know, I, I could see how you came to that conclusion. I will admit, I've, I haven't really tried to talk to like professors and stuff as much about it, mainly just because they're busy and they don't want to talk to students about stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, it's, I can totally understand that distinction because at MBTI, it's just a company trying to sell and make money, trying to market to companies uh, uh, on uh, how to uh, type their coworkers and get people into jobs. That's what, why the MBTI is there. It's not the psychological model it makes the no sense. Company doesn't care case. at all about <laughs> no, psychological stuff. No. Uh, so um, uh, but young I think uh, actually does have some relevance still in academia. I mean we talk about how Freud kind of won over young in the 1900s but a lot of time what I'm hearing from uh, people in psychology is that actually he is not that popular either <laughs> and uh applied manner and there's a lot of people that uh, have a high value for young and the people that i've seen that have a high value for young those are the kind of creative types that uh often they're people that are very interested in dream analysis and uh, the people that have very high openness that uh, yeah, those kind of people seem uh to really benefit from understanding young right I think we saw a huge shift in how people saw Jung and Freud in like the 50s and 60s with Skinner and behaviorism, um, because then it went into like trying to turn it from a philosophical science to an objective science, uh, which unfortunately means you have to throw the philosophical science almost out the window for most mm -hmm. researchers. Like in, in academic research related to psychology, it's like mostly numbers and stuff. Like it's nothing yeah. like philosophical or psychodynamic in nature. And I think that's a shame because you lose some of the human element of the human science psychology. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, what I've seen is that uh, people are focused on making psychology an applied model 
of uh, human behavior uh, rather than a theoretical model of human behavior. And what that means is they're kind of throwing anything theoretical out of the window in a sense and focusing, okay, can we measure it? Can we study it? Then it's real. The problem is there are so many things about human experience, like uh, dreams, like values, like uh, uh, intentions, uh, uh, desires, needs. Those are things that are just in here. You know, those are things are very hard to measure. Uh, we can say it, and people around us will be kind of have a vague idea of what we mean, but. Uh, it's hard to measure it. So it's almost like psychology loses the ability to understand that level of human behavior. Right. And I think you could see the biggest like distinction with this thing, with these in psychology and psychiatry, where psychiatry is literally just like number wise, statistically, what pill can we give you to give you the best odds of overcoming this thing instead of like sitting down with a person and really trying to like find the root of their problem now of course in psychiatry with more severe things you need to have medicine in certain cases i'm not saying yeah. medicine's bad but i'm saying that it loses the individualism aspect that i think psychology really needs i feel the same way we definitely need to have both approaches uh, and be able to take and uh, we definitely need a theoretic a room for a theoretical analysis of the human mind as well uh i was wondering uh what do you think um, we as uh, humanity need to <laughs> learn to from young and his ideas? What do you, that, we, that we're struggling with today? Something that we need to pick up from what Young has been saying. I think Briggs interpreted this well from Young, um, and that her general idea was that types almost like its best purpose was helping people come together and understand their differences. Mm. Um, I think Young himself was a little bit more interested in like the actual like. Uh, understanding of the the human psyche mm. whereas Briggs was like this is what it means for humans mm. um and the, the reason that the logo for the MBTI corporation despite if they don't actually like live up to these morals these days uh, is is four hands coming together is because it's supposed to represent like the four functions the four dichotomies the four letters just the four everything yeah. uh, coming together in unison and I think that's really what I try to promote on my channel and understanding typology is that you can use it to better understand uh, not only yourself, but other people and be more patient and forgiving with people who sometimes might need, uh, who might not understand themselves well enough to interact with you. Yeah, I, I can feel that because uh, we live in a uh, world today where everyone is so connected uh, through social media and everything, but still there are so many conflicts. Uh, people are really taking their personal psychological problems on a global scale, you know, making, uh, we, give, where we get these conflicts about the uh, need for freedom versus need for control, uh, the desire to fit in versus the desire to stand out. We have all these people kind of coming and pushing their own personal values on the world and saying everybody should live the way I'm saying and <laughs> the right way I live. So. Right. And most of the time, these people haven't even like developed their own, you know, sense of self yet. Like people, it's just like, in my opinion, the people who create the type systems without fully understanding the, you know, the, like the foundations of type, it's kind of like, why should we all, you know, live and under, live and through your system, through your understanding, if you haven't fully developed that system yourself? Yeah, it's so easy to put the blame on other groups or to uh, say that uh, these people are threatening our society or so, but often a lot of these things can come from personal insecurities and struggles that person has. I'm not saying that there aren't political problems that are real and that need to be addressed, but I think everybody should benefit from, could benefit from uh, developing the ability to see, okay, people are not evil, and people are not stupid. Uh, like when, okay, <laughs> this could be hard, <laughs> but people are not evil and people are not stupid and stuff. So that means people have good reasons for what they believe and uh, good intentions for what they're trying to do. And uh, we get so caught up in what they're saying and the superficial aspects of it, but we're failing to understand why they're saying it and for what reason. Exactly. And, and I think Jordan Peterson did a like a similar talk a couple of years back where he talked about the idea that like, oh, you just think everybody who's on the other side of the political spectrum to you is an idiot. Like, like if that's how you think, you know, maybe you're not fully understanding people in the yeah. situation. Not everyone's an idiot just because they, they see the world differently. 
Yeah, like I've been taking a lot of value from Jordan Peterson lately, especially his uh, lectures on on, uh, psychology. I found super fascinating to listen to. I love those. Uh, And uh, even if I am not personally a conservative, I can still find him a person that's really important to listen to. I think it's important to learn from all sides. I've never had any aversion to talking to anyone, regardless of their political viewpoints. I've always been interested and curious and why people think the way they do yeah it's Um, like how did you how did you come to these conclusions what what made you want to live this type of life or have these values that is interesting yeah but what he also points out is that a lot of people uh, they have this sense of disgust almost like they 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 see you and they see like a demon version of you and they 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 get this like a disgusted look in their eyes because they can't handle it if it's if it's like it creates the sense of disorder if people are different if people think different uh, people don't know how to deal with it and that's um, yeah, we, we have to learn to develop new scripts, I think, in our head as well for learning to manage mess uh, in the sense of a human mess. And I think type is a really good tool for that, you yeah. know, for building those bridges. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I see uh, some people can really struggle with that when they come into the MTI. I see some people that really talk about the types from a negative point of view and, uh, oh, this type is so terrible and, oh, I hate these people and, oh, I, uh, my parents, they were such terrible of that type. <laughs> uh, and, uh, it's like... Uh, um, that was that was not the goal. Like that's, uh, I think people know that themselves when they start to understand type. It was the goal was not for us to build up a reality where we are the good guys and everyone else is the bad guys. <laughs> we 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 have to look at okay, why am I learning this again? Oh yeah, I was learning this to work on myself <laughs> to uh, connect better with other people. Right. It's just like imagine if every person just made a nation of their own type like you know like all the intjs lived in one little country and they only did intj things like how boring (laughs) would life be (laughs) how would that work for you yeah that'd be miserable for me yeah uh, Uh, some of my favorite types are the ones that are very different from me (laughs) yeah because those are often they have the most to teach you exactly so um i am going to uh be doing a series on objective personality next and i was curious if you have any thoughts about their system and model or anything you think i should be looking at yeah so i met with dave like a year and a half ago uh for like an hour call he was nice enough to give it to me i, I think he's a nice guy i do disagree with a, a lot of like foundational aspects of their system mm. um as the biggest thing that i have a problem with is of course the naming objective personality yeah uh because i think that is like it already implies that they believe that their system is objective and true right Uh, so i think that's what like nets people in and and ropes them in really easily yeah um and the biggest issue with that is neither of them have any background in research Mm -hmm. like like none and it's just like oh okay so we're doing informal research uh and calling things objective and then like convincing everyone so i do i have some gripes against that Theoretically, I don't think it's a terrible system of personality. I think that 512 types is a lot, and I'm mm-hmm. sure that there's not always going to be meaningful distinctions between those categories. Um, I, like a, a mentor once told me, I was asking him, like how to build a scale for rating the importance of like how much you value. Like, do you like this thing on a scale one to ten? He was like when you're building these types of scales, usually you want to stay somewhere between like five and 15 or like max 20, because the distinction and difference between a five and a six is much larger if the scales to 10 than it is to 100. Right. Um, so the, the differences are so small in a 512 personality typing system that I don't think that there's going to be meaningful distinction enough to help people grow and learn from having that much distinction. That's a really interesting point. Uh, I'm curious, uh, uh, first of all, I want to say uh, uh, thank you so much for being in uh, my channel and for sharing your thoughts. I was curious if you have any uh, other uh, core message or anything you would like to uh, leave my viewers with, uh, maybe to summarize this discussion. Uh, no, I think um, I'm trying to think. I'm not good at generating things on the spot. <laughs> uh, no, just check out my channel, Asura Psych, if you want to see more stuff, I suppose. I do offer coaching and typing sessions at my website, AsuraPsych.com. Definitely. Uh, definitely check out the Asura Psych's channel. I will link it. Uh, and uh, uh, once again, uh, thank you for being on the show. And uh, uh, I, hope to yeah. see you guys, uh, I hope to see you in a future video.
It was a pleasure talking with you.